President, Madam President. The Senator from New York. I rise today for the 13th time to call for every Senator to have the opportunity to vote on a common sense bipartisan bill, the Military Justice Improvement and Increasing Prevention Act. This bill would ensure that members of our military would get the justice and the justice system that their sacrifices deserve. We do not have time to delay. I've begun calling for a floor vote on this bill since May 24th. That's 29 days ago. Since then, it's estimated that 1,624 service members will have been raped or sexually assaulted. More will have been victims of other serious crimes. And many of them will feel that there's no point in even reporting the crime because they have no faith in the current military justice system. That's because right now, if a service member reports a crime, the case and their fate will be put into a commander's hand. This bill argues instead that our service members who are victims of serious crimes or who are accused of serious crimes should have those cases reviewed by an impartial, trained military prosecutor. And it does not say the commanders are removed from their responsibility with regard to the military justice system. It doesn't say the commanders are relieved of the responsibility of ensuring good order and discipline. Under this bill, commanders will still have the full array of tools to implement good order and discipline. Counseling, restriction, confinement, protective orders, rank reduction, non-judicial punishment, summary court martial, and even special court martial. None of these change under the law. In addition, under today's system, only 3% of commanders have the right to do convening authority for general court marshals. So the truth is, is that a small number of commanders will be even affected by this legislation. But I can promise you, the view from the service members will be significant because they will now see that if there are someone who has been assaulted or harassed or had any justice need, that the person reviewing the case would be highly trained and unbiased. And if you're a black or brown service member who's disproportionately punished under the current system, you would know that the decision maker was impartial, unbiased, and highly trained. This change is something that will help for both victims of sexual assault, but also for defendants' rights. For serious crimes, we need both pieces of this puzzle, and this bill provides both. It will still allow commanders to take the administrative steps to send a message to their troops about what is or is not tolerated. And 97% of them have to do that every day without having convening authority for general court martial. And it will allow for victims and their families to get real justice. The Military Justice Improvement and Prevention Act will deliver the results that our service members and their families deserve without compromising command authority. That is what our allies have said. UK, Germany, Israel, Australia, Netherlands, Canada have all testified to our body in various hearings and various committees that they saw no diminution in command control and no diminution in the ability to prepare and train troops. The truth is, if this is a reform whose time has come, and every minute we delay, we are not standing by our service members. It is a change that has been supported by veterans groups across the country, whether it's the Iraq and Afghanistan Association of Veterans, whether it's the Vietnam Veterans Association, whether it's the Foreign Legion or the Veterans of Foreign Wars. Military veterans support this bill. This is a change whose time has come, and I request that we have a floor vote to decide this. 66 senators on a bipartisan basis support this. The committee has been addressing this issue for eight years. We've already passed 250 smaller reforms, none of which has had a dent on the problem. 
It's time to do the reform that survivors have asked for and that veterans organizations support. I ask unanimous consent at, that at a time to be determined by the majority leader in consultation with the Republican leader, the Senate Armed Services Committee be discharged from further consideration of S-1520 and the Senate proceed to its consideration that there be two hours for debate equally divided in the usual form and that upon the use or yielding back of that time, the Senate vote on the bill with no intervening action or debate. Is there objection? Madam President. The uh, Senator from Rhode Island. Thank you, Madam President. And let me thank my colleague from New York for her uh, work to move this issue forward. But once again, I would object to, to the request for the reasons I've previously stated. And in addition, uh, Madam President, today the ranking member of the committee, Senator Inhofe, released the written views of each member of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, which he had requested on Senator Gillibrand's proposed legislation. I understand that some in our body might discount these views of senior military leadership, and that's their prerogative. But I do believe it's important that their voices be part of the public discourse. They have dedicated their life to the service of this nation. They have led troops in combat. Uh, they have experienced uh, all of the issues that face commanders, face subordinates, uh, they have a unique, I think, position within the system. And in addition, the military will have to implement whatever system Congress devises, and it will require their expertise and skill. As such, I would like to enter these records into the record and ask unanimous consent to do so. Without objection. Thank you, Madam President. Now, I won't quote from these letters at length now, but I would just point out that the chiefs are open-minded about changing the way we prosecute sexual assault and harassment within the ranks. So am I. In fact, I think that is something that I hope becomes uh, clear in our progress legislatively moving forward. But they nevertheless stress the importance of ensuring that any change Congress enacts must be carefully tailor it to address the problems we are trying to solve. And the critical problem we are trying to solve is sexual assault, sexual harassment, any kind of crime connected to sexual misconduct. And in addition, that adequate time and resources must be afforded for implementing any of the changes that we propose. The nature and the magnitude of the change we are contemplating here is complex. We have to make sure we do this right. Further, we've heard over the past few years from the leadership of the military services, Judge Advocate General's Corps, who have uniformly opposed these changes in nature and scope. And these are the military lawyers, the very military justice experts to whom this bill would invest with authority currently reserved to commanders. And I believe we should listen to them as well, move prudently and deliberately to address the problem at hand. So as I've said a number of times already, I intend to include the administration's recommendations that derive from the President's Independent Review Commission in the markup of the defense bill subject to amendment, uh, not to move a bill on the floor without the chance of my colleagues in the committee to have their voices heard. These ladies and gentlemen have dedicated themselves to military policy for many years. They are experts in different dimensions of this issue, and they will add, I think, significantly uh, to simply take a bill and send it to the floor without amendments, I think is not the way to proceed. I anticipate a bill that will be strengthened through debate and discussion and deliberation by the committee. And with that, Mr. Pres Madam President, I would reiterate my objection to Senator Gillibrand's request. Madam President. The, the objection is heard. Madam President. Senator from New York. I disagree with the chairman because the service chiefs and commanders for the last eight years have objected to any serious reform. And in fact, what they've said time and time again, trust us, trust us, we'll get this right, and have objected to any major reform. And in fact, that's what they did any time we tried to reform the military. They objected on the same basis, using the same words, when we tried to repeal Don't Ask, Don't Tell. They objected in the same way when we tried to allow women to get credit for being in combat. They objected in the same way when we integrated the military. 
And so to hear these objections over and over again after the committee has studied this issue for eight years and allowed 250 reforms to be put into the NDAA, all of which were okay by the DOD, just flies in the face of reality. The military has demanded sole responsibility of these cases for the eight years that I've worked on this issue, and have they dented the problem? No. Sexual assaults were estimated at 20,000 by the military last they counted. Has the rate of cases going to trial increased? No. Has the rate of cases that have ended in conviction increased? No. So under no measurable has the DOD got a handle on this. And for the chairman to say it has to go through the committee, this issue has been going through the committee for eight years. And in fact, when I've passed bipartisan reform with people like Senator Joni Ernst on the safe to report language, it was taken out in conference by the same DOD staff that didn't want it in there in the first place. So under the chairman's view, this bill could certainly go through committee. We have more than half of the members, but I promise you it will be watered down or taken out in conference because the chairman and the ranking member are against it and they have the authority to do so. So he is not offering a fair process. The fact that this bill has 66 co-sponsors, how many bills in America in this body have the support of Ted Cruz and Liz Warren, of Mitch McConnell and Senator Schumer. None. This is the kind of bipartisan bill that this country is yearning for, the kind of common sense reform that can protect service members. And while the chairman is so interested in supporting what the generals and the admirals and the top commanders want, why does not he listen to the service members themselves? to the people who have suffered sexual assault, to the people who have suffered racial bias in prosecution. Those are the people that he should be listening to, not the top brass. We've deferred to them the entire 10 years I've been on this committee, and in the entire 10 years, our committee has failed. It is time to bring this bill to the floor. I yield the floor. The clerk will call the roll. Ms. Baldwin.